With relegation on the line, YFP unable to take the first map here of the series, dropping it 813 to MXS. Still one more map. They can take it to a map three. And Vans, it's not all done and over if they lose this. But this is the opportunity that we need to see the bounce back if they want to have their own fate here. Yeah, as we mentioned at the beginning of the game, it, it, you have control of your destiny here, and that win against MXS will guarantee for you to make it now into the midseason cup and really keep you away from potential relegation there. And you, it started off well, at least for YFP. As I mentioned before, they had a great job really adapting on the fly into the different types of plays that MXS really bring to the plate on the defensive side. But then that really all slipped in the end once MXS took the attack. And YFP, uh, something to appreciate about, about this team, they, they, they never get stopped. On average, against even the toughest teams in their group, they will take at least eight rounds. And guess what? That's exactly what they did against MXS. They, I would say it was one side of the, at the beginning towards MXS, like a six to two start. But what you can love about YFP is how they adapt to the, as, as the game goes on. But that, as, uh, that adjustment comes out too late. Like, they'll switch these enemies from different sides, and, and they'll readjust their post plant to try and be more aggressive outside of the site. And that's something that they learned to try and take the initiative against MXS a little too late. Yeah, and, and there's two things really that was, uh, was playing YFP on that first map. That first one is... How the hell do you stop Mata when they're playing yeah, the redate honestly. that the way that they are, right? Mata's freaking slain in that map. But the, the second thing is, once we saw MXS on the attack, we, we, we prefaced this at the beginning. It's like, okay, well, they don't have any lurk potential out of MXS. They'll probably have to play a lot as a group. They didn't even have that many lurks going out there for the defensive side for MXS either because... Odorishima was just moving with everybody else. They were a death ball every single time. So you were potentially missing flanking and breaking util to keep one player at bay or working the map a little more aggressively on your side to really fight against that util, against that death ball that MXS was bringing out. Because if you had too many players and giving him too much space and letting him set up, look at this composition. Looks, look at what goes into the site. Pain shells, dizzy. Uh, wingman for a plant, fault line, flashes, after there's just too much to flood against you that you can't really hide in these sites. So YP, unfortunately, at that point, they, they had, they had, or they were starting to figure that out, but a little bit too late. That's the thing. I mean, you're going up against the undefeated team. You're going up against a uh, really talented core of players and this composition that they've been running now that they did stick to the newer thing they were building. I mean, it's so hard to kind of get over that hurdle, but now we're going to be going over to split and when we're looking at split coming out from yfp i feel like this is one where they were able to actually show us some really really promising things lemon kiwi i mean they went down to an overtime loss last week up against oxygen in a honestly a map that they they sh stepped up they couldn't quite close it out but it was really really close yeah, YFP went really close against Oxygen. I think one of the most fearsome teams in the group, uh, as you said, 15 to 13, and they brought out that Reyna. And what's nice about YFP is they're okay giving up certain power positions of the map while trying to adjust by either smoking those off and really trying to play more as a team and not um, thinning themselves out on these pushes because that's where sometimes they lose these really crucial 1v1s. And that's something someone like from MXS doesn't do, aka Brock. I would have my jaw on the floor. He would just come out, no util, and win every 1v1. I think YFP has to be more aware of that and maybe play for trades better and i think they're okay with giving up positions on split like sometimes going to heaven or giving up heaven just smoking it off planting and just playing on the site but they got punished for playing on the site on lotus so they got to be almost trying to match that aggression or at least switching it up and not let mxs get too comfortable on the retake and there was one agent in particular the the reina that yfp like to be bringing out here piloted by penny that i really want to be looking at in this series vance because i mean when when you have this Reyna, you can be playing in kind of weird positions and you won't mm. necessarily get punished if you are going to go for that dismiss. I feel like what I was missing last time is Penny would stick around, go for a second and then get popped. But still, we have this agent that can really punish that. I think it's MXS. It's up to them to kind of adapt maybe to what YFP could throw their way. 
Yeah, and I almost feel like what uh, they were running for MXS on their end, where even they lost to Thinking Man, though, is they're playing a lot of stall, right? So this this is the, what, we're going to the second map. If I'm not mistaken, this was picked by YFP. So MXS gets to choose the defensive side first. That means that they have so much stall capability with a Viper, with an Astra, and with a Cypher. So when you have that, what can you really do as Penny with Arena to try to create space behind this double duelist comp? They're just, they're just doing a really good job with this, with this composition to really anchor out and help out the stall any type of pushes coming through i think the retake makes it a little bit harder at that point in this type of composition but if you're actually able to create so much a, of, a, of a ruckus here on the attempt of pushes coming out from yfp you won't really give a chance for the for yfp to really set up yet in the site so i think they're gonna have to fight first despite the delays maybe a little bit be be a little bit more reactive than proactive on their defensive side uh just because it's the nature of their composition and Moise's composition, I, you're exactly right, I think really favors their defense. They have a lot of visual cutoffs, whether it's the Cypher yep. cages, uh, the flexibility of the Astra Stars that can be moved around the map, and of course the Viper. I think maybe where Moist may lack is uh, options on site entry. But when Mata is dropping 31 kills, uh, you know, just let him go in and frack. <laughs> if Mata's doing Mata things, then this might be a really tough one for YFP. But it's time for Agent Select. See if YFP can be taken us to a map three for it's going to be two over or MXS. Um, I'll let you two off. Well, MXS, their Kryptonite maybe pistols, but hey, they went one and one last time. And we'll see with, you know, you know Mata, go frag. Sure, that works. But Brock has been a stellar, like one of the best initiators I've been watching in Challengers NA. Yeah, agreed. And now you see changes coming out from YFP. If you're looking at uh, your bottom of the screen, Penny not going into this arena role. He's going to try to double dive here with Bones, which again, I like this because of the amount of stalls. And you were talking about how much util they have to, in, in terms of denying visibility here, uh, Lemon Kiwi. But at the same time, if you're able to double dive through that util and trade perfectly or just swarm your defender side, that could be a huge, huge differential here that would give a chance for YFP to fight back in this game. And if you're actually able to path around that util, there's been a lot of times here. I think if I'm not mistaken, Thinking Man uh, did a good job uh, against uh, Moistex Shopify is really dance around the util that was set up here uh, by Vic on the defensive side. If he's, for example, holding this B site, you could wrap around the orange side instead because most of his trips were on that left side by the billboard. Uh, so some of the things that maybe they understood from watching a tape as well, YFP that is, when MXS lost against Thinking Man, and maybe they could try to replicate that uh, with their own composition here. And maybe that's why Penny would rather go to a safer pick than Arena, because then you shoot the, I think a team as good as MXS will just shoot the Leer, and then kind of the value, that window of opportunity you have to engage with Arena is so much smaller. Well, it's maybe better space creation out of Penny with the smokes and the dash, but there will be a star in mid from MXS. YFP, be aware of this, and the smokes that'll cut them off, so YFP taking control of mid is the most difficult task, but it opens up so many options as to where you want to take the well, spike. Yeah, now you're keeping MXS at bay. You got a little bit of attack to start things off. MXS grouping up together for a heal coming out now from Brock as they start off on the defense. And you thought maybe that mid side was open, right? But as soon as the orb went up, they threw up a smoke uh, out there from Flya. And then you also have Vic posted up there with the classic. So they still have good power numbers on this A side. And that's exactly where YFP is heading into. So it'll have to come down to that double dive that we're talking about. How much value will they get against the stack that you currently have from MXS here? Viper wall is interesting out of YFP because it denies them ramp, but also protects them from ramp. They just want to flood the site as soon as they do. The fire squad of MXS puts them to bed and just no, barely any damage at all, I should say, out of YFP. Steve knows he's going to get converged on, takes one for the road, but MXS were ready for this plan and they take pistol. Yeah, stars across the map, supported by the wall, players in the site. That's what was going to be very difficult, not necessarily only for Bones and Penny when they dash in, but everybody else that tries to follow behind. They're getting so separated by the amount of util that comes through, and you get overwhelmed by long-range ghosts, paint shells that was perfect there for MXS. Uh, again, you're, you're, you were working actually into the unknown for YFP because you haven't gained too much information from that dog that went into mail. You had no idea where MXS were actually posted up except towards that A ramp Without and you wanted to gamble that back. Vision. So they need to work that map a little bit more, maybe try to have better reads into Don't where like they that. should be hitting. But I mean, it's it's just pistol round. Oh man. MXS 
Spikes has taken the initiative. Mono with Spike two, Fly down. with two, Yfp brought down to one, and and the enemy. This was is punished. not chill out of M M MXS. Like, what if we don't <laughs> even get to even try to enter anything before they're just team wipe? That's what you want. Mata that was so confident from that first map is like, okay, well, if we're going to get pressured here towards B, let's just fight it. Oh, we have perfect nice weapons. We could fight against the, the, the pistols or whatever. Force buy if YFP wanted to go uh, with a force buy. They had better weaponry at that point. Thankfully, as you saw, they're only playing against classics. Beautiful util being done. You saw a person being concussed by the Astra Star being placed on the ground. So it gives a lot of opportunity for MXS to just wipe the slate clean on that B site. I like where that star was placed too, very forward in B main, so allowed the defense to step up in a more aggressive position. Now there is also a star and of course Viper smokes in Damn. mid. And you don't want to get grab weld or something near happen. YFP, this would be such a treacherous place to try and take, but both of those drop is interesting timing out of MXS. Three for Mata this round. This is an okay. insane duelist to go up against YFP <laughs> in a two versus three. It's not unwinnable, but sheesh. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to say right on that previous round. Have Mata fight because he's confident. He could build up a showstopper ASAP. Does the same thing this time around. Now has showstopper ready. Down mid. Okay, Thief gives them a chance, but now Mata will be denied off the ace. I no fun for fight. him. But YFP in heaven, best place. He could be if he was going to go to B, but has no idea where these people are. And yeah. Brock and Flyer are split up, so definitely know a, at least what site will be hit. 30 but, seconds yeah. left. There was definitely a winnable condition or possibility there for Thief if he actually caught Flyer, because Flyer only has his ghost. But Flyer repositioned down towards Long at, at the garage is everything. He could let Thief plant at this point. He could watch behind the box and give a chance here for Brock to rotate and help him out. And Brock still has a flash. So they go for a flash double swing and really pinch Thief. Oh, when Flyer's not going to swing on this, is ready to pinch with Brock. But Thief mm. is also not going to play from B main, maybe knowing that the star was there. I don't know, but Thief, he already cleared heaven. He smoked off backside. He's going to just watch from B main, but he heard the drop. And here's the stomp. And that's where MXS played with their food and three in a row for them. <laughs> you saw that thief was just waiting for the longest time. He had that sixth sense that someone was going to come towards My that B main. And especially when that flash went yeah, towards that spawn, he knows that there's more pressure for the players on that B heaven side to make the noise first. So he thought he might be able to catch um, Brock dropping down into sight. And when he did, then that's when Flyer walked out and got that pick in the end. So he ran that clock down. I was surprised actually that he didn't try to go for like a flash double swing. Uh, they used a flash to clear out towards spawn instead. But, it, I mean, it's still good. I mean, flashing towards spawn, if it actually did catch Thief pushing out, that gives a chance here for Flyer to move out from B main. So you, you oh, see the intricacies nice. and the layers of the decision behind a utility you're trying to do here for MXS on that advantage that he had despite the better weapon for YFP. So great way, once again, converting their bonus round, putting it at YFP back into a, a small buy and delay now on middle as a jump spot that came out from Odoshima saw two players at least, but little does he know there's three. Oh, YFP almost timed that well. They're even going to have the Trailblazer uh, chomp down on Odashima. Mata goes Huge. to the sky and sends Physic back to heaven. YFP in a 4v4, put a dent into mid. And that's where someone like Thief can now explore. And whether uh, YFP fell like they could go B, then you would have Thief as cover from that place. But YFP now that mid is open. Let's see what oh. A is all about. And Mata shuts down the option. Mata's everywhere, and he also flashed towards spawn. Nobody was towards B heaven, so the reposition from Brock inside a site. So he could support Vic right now. Let's come up huge with a util. Oh, there's like three right there. Vic gets overwhelmed. YFP have evened up the numbers, but Bones is low. Now just hoping to get the plant. Smokes are clear from heaven. MXS peaking. Have the lineup for wherever YFP could emerge, but they don't have ramp secured and Thief oh, gets yeah. read like a book. The boom bot will try to draw that fire and even go down to that hallway. Oh, we'll paint up there in the corner. The pet shows may oh, be no. able to flush those rats out of the sewer. And YFP do their best, huddle together as a team, stand together, fall together. MXS now tap the spike. Bones knows they're close, but 
Against a rifle? That is a tough One place. This is engagement oh. for YMP to take and fly with you gets the defuse. A rare mistake from Mata that could have been costly there. Yes, you talked about throwing those pain shells to ride out the ones hiding in the corner, but it bounced off the wall right at the feet of Brock, and that could have been bad, bad news bears, especially if the contact with the Stinger came towards the end when Mata was trying to get the spike at halfway. I love the beginning of this round, though. This bait and switch, force out the dog, uh, and get get your opponent hit so you can hopefully get more kills with the showstopper. But that final kill right there, that was bad spacing in the end for the last two, but it's a lower buy. You'll take it there for YFP. You get some money in. You keep the economy somewhat low against MXS. You, has, you have a chance now to turn around into your favor, especially that Bones is one away from a showstopper. So they'll attempt to fight towards this side, and so will MXS. Wow. Early sky flash there from Fizzig, knowing that MXS wow. is like to play close, and they punish it. YFP, the adjustments are coming earlier. They're established on the site. Now there's a camera from Vic that would uh, try to spot Cover, go. structure there, but YFP kill everyone, so it's all up to Vic and Brock. Flash and Trailblazer available, no. but Brock doesn't even care. He gets two. Fire has brought this down to equal numbers. Showstopper Bones, ring around the rosy, flashes. Galore. Yeah, Brock with the Trailblazer spots where the two of YFP are. Just needs to light up. Gets one, but not the second. And YFP live on. Oh my god, they lined there. up to that one. If you kept spraying, he that could have been Brock the Gun once again with a clutch. But what a great double entry by Thief. So much good utility was thrown there from YFP just to push back that second round where they got plastered by both Fly and from Mata when they were on classics only. This time to use utility to push him back. Thief didn't give a damn. Just walked out. Instant headshots on two players playing towards that B site. Don't allowed from them to plant. But then Brock really made it difficult there for YFP to set up on the pulse plant. And that would have been a different story going into round number six for YFP. But saving grace, silver yeah. lining. We talked about the low economy. This is one of the fewer buys that you have from MXS. I mean, they're still running the economy on their side. You see a lot of these players are playing half shields because they want to have a healthy buy in the next round still. I've got your trail. That engagement favors YFP, at least. They clear mid. They draw out Fukushima's attention there. And YFP heads towards A. They jump past the micro wall, but right into the side so big. Same. And man, the Utah no, was just weird. too good. Why have we got caught? That's what you got to do when you double dive to try to understand where the cypher is setting up. If not, you just get slingshotted back and just caught like a web in this. Uh, sorry, a fly in a spider's web, just like Penny did. And definitely Vic was ready to, to seize the opportunity to take him down. And uh, that flash from Brock was perfect towards that ace light beginning to the end in that round for MXS. They didn't give a chance here for YFP to show that they have what it takes here after they got the plant they did some good econ damage against mxs and then mxs again one of those moments where oh well they think they have control let's just try to push against them just like they did on lotus and they really just kept yfp honest and forcing the timeout already uh, on the side of yfp but honestly yfp are losing the a long engagements like they're they're of uh using their Viper wall to cut off ramps so they can have just a safe, focused entry. We talked about this in the pre-show that YFP like to play as a team, but they also die as a team. They get hit by one piece of util from a sky and then they're all messed up. There's no kind of like safeguard. There's no secondary push. There's no heaven control. So YFP are completely at the mercy of someone like Brock. And of course, Brock is always going to be playing with a secondary person at A. And no matter where you go, if you're YFP... They are just getting hit and they're not able to always have an even trade in that regard. This, then that's the important thing and one thing that they could start using here with this composition is that A heaven control. You could still have a flash and a dash from the A ramp and then bone satchel on the top of the window if the util is correct, right? Because Vic is currently playing it in a position where he's just looking for trap kills. So you have a really a good chance to suffocate the A site ramp and really use that double duelist pulse plant in your control if you take control of that A ramp. Right now, they're just brute forcing and onto the into the ground, not really splitting that much into these sites, which makes it a lot easier here for MXS to set up. I mean, look at this. This is, uh, once again, another attempt of them maybe pushing a lot of players down towards that B main, but how much control did they have on middle? Zero. Nada. Maybe it was going to be a, a late lurk or something like that. They're trying to re-hit. I mean, they do have a little buy, so it's understandable, but they do they do need to get a little bit more of this uh, verticality control, I think, at this point, if the double dive into the main entrances aren't working in their favor. 
And Brock just cleared the the A side or the A long area. Um, Trailblazer and Flash to use, but now YMT had pivoted and Physic was so far pushed forward. Everyone. And now Nerd, that gives Nerd death to Vic. And YFP, their plan has been foiled. How you go in, you also don't have the best of buy you Penny with a rifle. And look, but what makes it you still? Flashes of the entirety of YFP. Seekers from Brock. Gonna one increasingly one. trap YFP, who are caught out in the open. Heaven is smoked off. YFP walk into a bear trap. Yeah, how is how easy is it? As you can see now, Odashima on top of the A Heaven just stays on top, like he's on a turret looking down on everybody. It's like World War Z, free shots on <laughs> zombies. And that's the story right now, right? I bet again, I, I have to at least give it to YP. There were on an eco in that previous round, but I do hope to see a little bit more like um, of what that could look like if YP don't don't start taking control of the heavens because they still have a very hard time entering the site. Vic is alive the whole time too. Yes, he's low on the kill feed, but it doesn't matter because all that Uto is so good to allow the other teams of MXS, the other players of MXS to get these kills. Jonah with first blood. It looks like they don't get hit by you till this time. And start okay. chilling in. Brock gets caught mid flash. And YFP have the two main advantage. And they even catch the ramp flank out of MXS. And that is this anchor physic. Snake bite doesn't even push him off. And Odashimo is checking the corner and he gets caught. YFP just upping the aggression. And forcing MXS to make quicker decisions. This is no longer in MXS's control. Fly is in a 1v5. Oh. Willing to save the rifle, gonna do what they can, and YFP get a Zenny flawless. Yeah, you, you you said it correctly with the YFP forcing MXS to make quick decisions, but unfortunately it wasn't the correct decisions at that point if you saw that the middle of the round sorry unfold it started off well with yfp though the change of pace that they had was his viper wall as you see that they're currently placing from jonah six that goes across the a site they pulled it up and as soon as they had two or three players behind that wall they pulled it down and then they caught vic off guard and then got first blood and they just entered the site i like that little change it caught mxs off off guard and when they were caught off guard everybody tried to make individualistic hero plays because again back like lotus had that confidence wants to fight back against YP, saying that it could be alone and, and take down two with them, like everybody's motto in the roster. Yeah. But unfortunately, there they um, they paid the price, and that gave a, a great round for YP. Um, but at least now they have a pit towards middle for MXS. They have a double util going in here in front of the B site. Their stars in a trip, and uh, that will help here fly a fight inside the spot. And Brock Flash didn't go deep enough, so. Yeah, there's a lot of util for YFP to try and dash through and may have caught Physic. Odoshima still stands and MXS are just picking them apart. It's all up to Thief on a 1v3. Yes, having a smoke, that's going to go away. Puts himself in a safe position. Is trying to force these 1v1s as best as he can. Draw them out. Got the smoke at the back site. Knows that least Mata is there. Oh, Locked man. into Vic's line of fire, hearing him stop. The MXS are going to let him know. And that's the issue of playing more standardized is what I'm trying to get to, right? If it didn't that, if it didn't happen to that wall coming down and they face check the, the fight into the A site, they just went for an all lot hit towards B with no B heaven control. How many kills here that MXS get from B heavens? That was two or three at least. Gives a chance for Brock to run around the map and really not allow YFP to get a plant down. So uh, that's really the nature currently of YFP oh, playing the attack. Oh. They think and they thought potentially that they have MXS discovered here with the way that uh, MXS played uh, against Thinking Men, but yeah, they're definitely uh, they're definitely in for a surprise. Like I know somebody's there who shot my full bot. You're getting it where the sun don't shine. Jonah found out the hard way. Oh. B side shut down. Odashima holds his own, goes one for one in vents. This YFP. Scout to see who else could emerge. Gonna see what info the Trailblazer gets. There's at least one in heaven. Now cutting noise, Dang. they are going to get flash. Thankfully, there wasn't a swing out of MXS, but it will make YFP rethink. Okay, the sky is in heaven. So let's go to a site where we don't get flashed. Maybe A. I like this at least though. They they have some mid control, so they have an opportunity to fight towards the heavens, but they can't split anymore. Just unlucky that Bones got wall banged down to corroded by the sneak bite to die. But Vic, it's a three versus one on that site. Vic lives, place his life in the paranoia. Next to him is a teammate that's getting smoked off. 
Thick. Not one. Spike planted. To show his position quite yet. Also doesn't want to show himself to someone in heaven. Physic Big wins kill. that. That's huge. And a three versus three. Now Physic can just play at the back side and be the babysitter to the spike. He has flash. Access. Want to retake heaven. Almost two set up for Thief, but Penny was there for the trade, and Wyatt beats support each other to a round victory. And now what happens when you take heaven control? You win at that point oh there God. for YFP, right? A three versus five, though, at this point. That was well converted by YFP. It looked like it was over from the get-go when he lost their early players on that mid-control attempt. But the the protocols and staying calm under the pressure to just not give a damn about Vic in the back of the site, move in and still plan for heaven, have this beautiful flash that came up for that double swing to just guarantee what happens in the end will be a 1v1 if your player died in the back of the A site to hopefully convert the round. So well done here for IP. They understand now that A control seems to be an opportunity for them that they can seize. Hey, that's an opening pick for Physic. Oh, two with the showstopper and they fake it. They're not even gonna commit to A. They've dealt with the biggest games in their butt being brought with these flashes. And now you're left with Vic and Flyo who try to make their way through the snake bite and the smokes and now in hell, the YFP will get a plant down. It's Vic with a one versus five, but he is nowhere to be found. I think he wants to save Four is an or. Yeah, I mean, a one V five at that point when you're a cypher with no util, it's gonna be impossible. <laughs> In that economy, you finally see it here. Despite being a 7-3 to three scoreline in favor of MMX, MXS, rather, sorry. This would have been two rounds lost in a row for YFP. They have an opportunity to maybe buy around this weapon that they saved. But man, what a change of pace there for YFP on the attack. This time, really doing a good job pinching into a heaven control from both middle and a ramp. So they satchel across that, got a showstopper double kill inside the vents while they also open up and gain control towards that uh, mid side, right? To really push those players towards them. And now they understand where Vic is at, they'll try to hunt him down. How many guns can he take away, though? He takes away two, not bad. And now Thief is shooting bodies, Cover too. And just a reminder that Thief Last is playing against his, uh, his former team, or at least some of his former teammates. So you just know how much this match means to him and how much he's been performing. Like on mm. Lotus, Thief is up in these 1DX scenarios that I think he, he does a really good job on. Not in this case, as in like he wasn't in a 1VX situation, but he's really stepping up for his team. This match means a lot to Thief. He's definitely doing a lot right there for uh, for YFP at this point and the results that you're currently seeing from YFP. If it wasn't for his double entry a couple of rounds ago, uh, it would have been a different story here as well. But you see the importance of Vic saving that weapon. If he could have, that would have been four rifles for them in this round, but instead it's a judge in the hands of Mata, and he has to play it towards the ramp, so that gives a little more space now for YFP to work with, but unfortunately, they have to understand that, right? There's a lower buy. They might be working with the judge somewhere in here, and yet they're still trying to work for mid-control. And MXs did a fake. They had someone jump out of fence towards oh, heaven, and YFP <laughs> think there's no one in fence now. But it's Mata with a judge that could come out at any moment, and he's waiting for his opportunity, but maybe it doesn't matter because MXS fry away YFP from the front, just from below the, the B side. So it's a two versus three, and make that no one left. Three for Vic this round. It's an eight to four half for MXS. Yeah, there was definitely some Switching utility sides. that didn't really allow for MXS, or sorry, for YFP to get too much control out of B main to help out those that took B having control. They had a great opening, a flash to start things off there for B having control, but every Everything else to try to flood inside that site was really missing there for YFP. So you salvaged the last round. You didn't have here a, a scoreline that finishes to a 6 6 when he had a strong start here for MXS. You're really seeing why MXS is comfortable floating this uh, this map on split against YFP despite their loss against Thinking Man. Again, it's just some things that unfortunately maybe against Thinking Man they just shot better that day as well, but the protocols are still there for MXS to have a very strong and good defensive start. Now they take the attack. And how do you play this for YFP? Now, you needed more rounds on the attack because he had this double uh, duelist uh, composition, yet still very doable here on the defender side at uh, map like split. MXS just cutting off the main with their Viper wall, YFP protecting heaven as much as they can, but also giving up some hole of the ramp in this case. And that's where MXS is going to send the Trailblazer, who is in Rogue, who is in heaven. 
there. I'm not spotted Bone much, bot, yeah. but the boom bot and the paint shells will at least reveal that Bones is up there, and Orochima just dry peeks and gets caught by Jonah, giving him access the option of pivoting B. Two will await them there. It is Penny and Thief with the paranoia too, but MXS now cut noise and tried to elusive. I mean, they'll make noise now by grabbing his orb, so why do have to be ready for it? But there's so many players from MXS right now on this head towards the A site. Yet a fake moving back towards B. And this is actually a good opportunity right now for YP. Thief has pushed all the way out towards B main. He's gonna hear all of this rotate. Penny just has to stay alive for now. Penny's doing their best and oh B main reinforcements coming in. Second too late, but Thief there to clean 30 up seconds gets at left. least two. Speaking of two, two left from each side and that post plant, Vic will get it down. And you know the two that are left, he spotted them at the A site last time. And physics still has a flash. Bones with nothing but hope and trust in his teammate. As Vic knows, there's no one in heaven. Remote. And you caught Physic lacking. No flash bones at 9 HP and a dream. That dream will die as MXS take pistol. Yeah, fortunately, waking up from a nightmare that he lost the 1v2 attempt, but he was low on HP. But you can definitely see from the defaulting that YP had, right, as we're introducing the split and this composition and how Jonah has to be an anchor player for YP. He was playing mid solo as his Viper, and his job is to detain, maintain with the Viper utility. And him getting caught really opens up everything there on that map for uh, for MXS, and YP had to fight back from the extremities. So that was that's the game plan still they're still working the extremities on on the, this dual hold they had the viper on middle and we'll have to see if that will change in their gun rounds or if if it isn't then mxs probably figures that out too mxs wait for the trailblazer to see what fire gets drawn in mata satchel is in and then One mxs smoke remaining. off heaven they have people pushing ramp they succeed at every engagement and bones is in a 1v5 and yeah catch us someone over extending but mxs is like oh, A-takes are so perfectly executed, it doesn't even matter. Oh, and like that's up to 10. You already saw the lineups being set up at the beginning of the round here where they wanted to land that orbs being thrown on the top of the heaven two just to decay and corrode anybody who's trying to walk across towards the entrances to catch MXS off guard as they're flooding inside the site. So very, very well done at that point, staying far behind from the bottom of the ERAM, understanding their fun against pistols. Now what happens here on the attack? We talked about it, right? About the, the setup that you currently have from YFP and MXS. Do they want to move middle to fight against the initial util? Waste that util early against Joe. Oh, no. Who him on this side, Toxic on his side rather, went for full shields, which means he only has one snake bite. So therefore, less utility to delay on middle. The responsibility continues to be very hard. Oh, no. It's quiet. And he's walking into his smoke and into a flash and the boom bot. I know it's in that an awkward really position, awesome. just barely able to get his gun yeah, out in time. Right and now it's a two main advantage for MXS. They converge into B. One site holder there. The neural theft will reveal Thief. Well, at least can go one to one. And reinforcements from Visit came in to at least get a trade in place. Penny, this is still doable. Has the dash, but is going to stay safe in heaven. Is MXS? I just spotted the little man bun there out of Penny, but. This is going to be a tough plant to try and prevent Penny. Spike planted. Smokes down. See, they can bait the fire out of MXS. Penny not spawning anyone in the backside, but spotted someone at the door. And this is just a horrible place to try and push into, especially now with the snake bite. But not knowing if the second person is there is the question that Penny has. Heard someone stomping though. Penny. Fire in the hole. That's his own stomping. He's trying to make noise. Oh, shows up for some type of noise you want to hear. But the lineup, the timing out of Penny. Oh my God. And a showstopper to end that. That's so unfortunate for uh, at least YFP that Mata had a showstopper in this round. But what, I mean, I love this read from MXS when they realized that the orb came up super early. They're like, oh, well, what's the timing? Nobody saw us and they, we never really were contested. There was an opportunity or maybe a read that Jonah was trying to work around that orb and they upped the tempo for MXS, got that pick and really opened up that site. But a very nice attempt, at least for Penny to try to win that round for the team. The YFP, they're, they're in a, such a broken buy right now. MXS being as aggressive as they can. Off the paint shells from Mata clearing that main door. Now they're smoked off there by Thief. 
He's not going to be able to hear them leave. And excess cut noise. And Vic is uh, having his util being dealt with because Kenny's being aggro at A. But still no one dropping quite yet in the early round. Toxins going up. Toxins they're seeing the difference down. there from YP. They're trying to adapt a little bit more too because they have the judge from Bones inside mail. So you could still delay as much as you could from that B Scout heaven destroyed. with snake bites and orb. But that means there's nobody playing towards this A site now. Penny's holding it solo. And he doesn't even have a dash. He used it early in the round. And he's pretty much in a gambling a spot here to try to anchor for YFP. Vic got all those util dealt with, so like he doesn't know how many are at A. It all depends on if MXS can successfully push mid. Try and maneuver their way into A. Oh, but this jump is gonna hurt! At least they go one to one. Bones will remove Mata. Both 30 races are left. out. MXS will send a bird, a flash One into down. heaven. An unlucky check from Vic. Looking at the corner, Physic will upgrade his weapon. Try and reestablish themselves into heaven. Vision. Now MXS running out of time. It was A, it was mid. Ten now seconds it's B, left. and the uh -oh. one person to try and prevent this plant is Thief. Puts a bit of damage into Odashima. Do they have this plant in time? MXS brought this down to the wire. And that M YFP's retake is around the corner. And they have even less util now. No flashes or anything. This might be over for YFP. Unless they get an early pick against Brock right now. A long range fight on the top of the balcony. Not looking good. Odashima oh, got some damage into that hip. Now it's sticking out. They swing and they get pieced up by MXS. Match point, series point to uh, start deciding YFP's destiny if that'll be relegation or not. Yeah, that's why I was hoping that with that call that there's three players alive. They have no util on their side. They haven't been win really winning their fights in these long range battles against MXS. They potentially could have saved their weapons so that they could have a much stronger buy this time around here. But yeah, that was that was just unfortunate at this point. Yeah, I like that YFP at least tried to find some sort of timing, understand it that was going to be late lurks as a default thing from MS MXS. Sorry, was figured out. But I think that up. overextension in the back of the billboard was everything. He needed to stay alive or to at least get one I've got your to give a chance for YFP to retake. Okay, now we're just exploited by CC Eagers. Yeah. Yeah, MXS. Bring in all the util to just have YFP focus on that and not on the bodies. And they're all the smoke, the fire, and the flames. Penny, Blade Storm, that can shut down, and MXS have the plate and the pit. YFP tried to follow the dog. Hey. And if they're just getting mowed down, Bonzo still has a judge, and that may do some work in the pit, but it's all Attackers over. Win. MXS suffocate them and take split 13 to 4. The fact that Mata still gets a kill when he gets bit by a dog is everything. It was a storyline pretty much of how MXS looked really good here on that second map of split overall. Nothing was really working in favor and fortune of YFP and talking a little bit more about um, MXS though, they, it was everything was on their side on how good they were in terms of their shots, in terms of how they fled against YFP against their fights. And really, what could you uh, do at this point where MXS looks so good on defense? I know what I can do. I can bring back Sierra because uh, Sierra was hyping up. I was hyping YFP up that they at least can take eight rounds from every team, but I guess not this time. Uh, yeah, I think that was a classic um, caster curse right there. But I mean, <laughs> it is hard when you're looking at the components that they have, right? I mean, MXS, I think they've done a really good job throughout this split in kind of leveling up. We got to see a couple of stumbles, and I feel like they've learned really, really well from like that. So when you're going up against an MXS that still looks really strong, Vance, it, it's tough for YFP, no matter how good we can make them out to be. Yeah, and if anything, everything is in order right now in the world of Valorant, this, this upset prediction that White River was trying to do here against MXS, thinking that YFP was <laughs> I think YFP will bring the upset of the century. That was Mark really good. My words, that was right? really good. That was like, why, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, wow. But no, it, everything was fine. MXS just looks really good. MXS just looks like the MXS that we know, uh, which is why, again, they're, they're arguably in that discussions of being in the top three and, and being a very good spot right now for the midseason cup. YP, I mean, they, they ran out of gas after that Lotus matchup. They had a great job or, or did a great job tying up the game six to six on their half. But everything was really one sided for MXS towards the end. And when this team's warmed up uh, for the MXS side, uh, it's just going to be an uphill battle uh, no matter who they play against.
Yeah, the MX's offense was was layered. They came in with either a trailblazer or some util to shoot at before their bodies were presented. While as YFP, they got ran in. <laughs> they got five man flash by by a guy named Brock, and then they all got pieced up. Like most of the time, they tried to go into A, so that was rough. And then mid, you just couldn't touch because there was Astro Stars, there's Viper, there's sometimes somebody with a Judge Invent. Like YFP had so limited options based on the util that they had to really break up the, the defensive hole that MXS have. At least I'm excited that we're getting to see this iteration of MXS near the tail end of the split because, I mean, if this is the form they're going to have for the Midseason Cup, I'm definitely excited to see <laughs> that going on forward. YFP, though, of course, they had to win to save themselves entirely from relegation, but of course, there is still scenarios where they might not be the ones that get relegated out. But now they have to be crossing their fingers, watching the other games, and kind of just praying to the Valorant gods up there. Of course, we want to be celebrating the victors of this set, so we're going to be having an interview with MXS after our post-series highlights. One enemy remaining. One enemy remaining. They say in life, there are no guarantees. Hmm. They say a lot of stuff like that. Slow it down. Play it safe. Hedge your bet. So what? You gonna listen to that? You gonna stop? Because they can't guarantee you'll pull this off? No guarantee you'll win? No guarantee everything's gonna be fine? your own guarantees. Nobody else will light your way. Start your own fire and keep it burning. And we guarantee you'll have one hell of a lifetime. Well, it's 
another week, which means it's another MXS win. 2-0 over YFP in our final week here in Split 1. And to chat a little bit more about that, I have Vic on the line. First off, I want to say congratulations, not just on this win, but the undefeated split so far. How does that feel for the mental of the team now with the midseason cup ahead of you? Uh, feels really good. I think we've improved a lot throughout the season, and I think we're excited to play the midseason and get to play uh, other teams that we haven't faced, like M80. So I think we're all very excited. There's two different ways I can go here, but first I want to talk about the improvement of the team because there definitely has been tweets about, okay, this has necessarily not been the greatest game coming out from the team. We need to kind of clean up this. So what do you think has been like the biggest key behind the scenes in the performance from week one to what we're seeing now? I think a lot of it's our head coach, Mac. I think he's been putting a lot of work with us cleaning up and like choosing the comps and helping us individually improve. Um, with addition of like Chad, I think he's been a really big help with like the roles. I think he's made my life a lot more comfortable with me playing Smokes again. And I think everyone else has been doing a lot of work uh, with Mata, Flya, and Brock including. It's definitely work that's been paying off. And I think just in the right time too, because you're saying that going in the midseason cup, I mean, yeah, you're going to be facing off against powerhouse teams in the other group here. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you think MXS stacks up against this M80, this Tudor Troop over there. Um, I think nothing's free. I think they're all good teams, but I think we'll have a great match with anyone that we play. And I think we'll put in a lot of effort with prep and how we want to play ourselves. So I think the matches will be very good. Definitely excited for them. And that was a very... That was a very respectful answer, so I definitely appreciate that. When I'm looking back at the series with YFP, um, this 2-0 that we had, I want to talk a little bit about that split. Um, since YFP, they played Reyna in the past on there, deciding to go for the Jet today. Was there a version of the team that you kind of wanted to go up against? Did you think maybe this was an easier split because of the Jet, or did you feel kind of confident either way? Um, I think we knew that the C their CT was going to be really good, but we started CT, so they didn't really have, like, that many rounds to play with because I know Penny's a really good opper. Um, I think their attack would have been better if they had Reyna with their flashes, but they didn't have it. I think overall they played good. I think we just had a better game plan going into the game and we understood how they wanted to play. So I give props to them anyways. I think we just had a better understanding. I definitely, looking back, I mean, MXS, this is the powerhouse team of this group. So it was definitely well fought by them, but definitely a difficult one. Keep the short and sweet, um, just like the series. Um, but Vic, thank you so much for chatting with me. Have a good rest of your night, okay? Yep, you too. Thank you. Thank you. As for us, first series, short and sweet. We still have one more on the way, though. We have, together, we are terrific, going up against Thinky Men after this break.